Hi, I'm Bruce Aisha. In this video, we're going to be looking at compression in Cubase. Before we start looking at the specifics, it's probably worth talking a little bit about what compression actually is. So compression is a dynamic process. It changes the dynamics of whatever you happen to be feeding into that particular processor. It allows you to do things such as changing the difference in level between the peaks, the loudest parts of the signal, and the quietest parts of the signal. It allows you to change how quickly those, that type of processing actually happens. It allows you to do other even more complex things when you deal with multiband compression which focuses on certain areas of the frequency spectrum or even more unusual types of dynamic processing such as parallel compression and other types. So here we're going to focus on very standard type of compression where we feed an audio signal into a processor and we try and control the dynamics based on the level of the signal that's actually being fed into that process. So let's have a look at it in Cubase. So I've got a track here with a drum beat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the mixer. I can see the sound playing through here and the level of the signal on that channel and also on the output. Now Cubase has a lot of different ways you can access compression. There is a compressor built into the channel strip. But for simplicity here, I'm going to load up a compressor as an insert plugin. So I'm clicking on this slot here. I'm going to Dynamics. As I mentioned, compression is a dynamic process. I'm going to choose compressor. Now you can see there are other forms of compressor, multiband compressor, uh, expander, tube compressor, vintage compressor, VST dynamics. But let's just go for compressor, keep things simple. I'm going to open up that window. So we have here the compressor. And there's a few things that we need to be clear of um, and actually understand when we're actually going to start processing. We can see this little display here. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And that shows you how the dynamics will be managed. And it will be, it'll be useful when you actually tie in what you're hearing to actually what's going in this display here. We also have the input level and the output level. And we have this intermediate little display saying gain reduction. And this will more become clear as we start to process the sound. I'm pushing the threshold up to 0 dB. That means that no processing will occur at this stage when I play back the audio. Let's play the audio. And you can see here we have the input level and the output level, and they're the same, and there is nothing going on in this display here. As I bring down the threshold, notice how we're starting to get a little bit of movement here. Let's bring it down to something quite extreme. And notice this mismatch now between the input level and the output level. And also look at this display here. As we bring that down, this little point here, that equates to the threshold point. This display shows the mapping between input level and output level. What compression is actually doing, it's saying, when I reach, when the audio ever reaches, any of the peaks reach minus 30 dB full scale, so that will be somewhere around here on the actual display of the actual channel itself to do something to process the audio in a certain way. And what the compressor does, it does dynamic processing. It scales the output level. So it scales the output level based on this ratio control here. What it's effectively saying, it says for every, once anything gets above that threshold, any decibel change will be, it will actually affect the output by half as much. In other words, the output can never go quite as loud as the input. So if I get a 2 dB change in input level, the output will only go up by 1 dB. I can really push the ratio and you can see how this changes this here and it starts to become something a bit like a brick wall. It limits the sound, so it turns more into something called a limiter. And effectively what's happening here, when I play the audio, it makes the, aud the audio, makes it very hard for the audio to go above a certain point. Let's push this even further. In fact, it's letting a little bit of the audio through. And the reason it's letting a little bit of the audio through is you have these things called attack and release times. And they're how quickly the processor reacts to the changes in level. If I have a really fast attack and I have a really fast release, and I push those so it's processing it absolutely immediately based on this, these peaks here, and I play the sound, 
you can see how it really squeezes the level. You can have a listen to what it does to the audio. It squashes everything down. And in fact, because bass frequencies carry a lot of level, they're the things that really push the compression into this stage where it starts to compress. If I bring the threshold back up whilst playing, you'll see how the changes changes the sound. So you can see why it's a dynamic process. It changes the level, the output level, in response to what's coming in at the input. And you find that most compressors will have these ratio controls. They will have variations on attack, release, and hold times, how it analyzes the audio based on peaks or the average level, RMS. And we also have a mix control sometimes. You can mix in the dry signal with the mix signal level for doing parallel compression, which is quite an advanced technique. And of course, we have the threshold control. Another very important thing is we have this thing called makeup gain. And it's, it's in this case, it's set to automatically try and match the input level with the output level. If I turn that off, and it's doing no automatic control of input level and output level, let's have a listen to what it does. Let's push the ratio up again, so it's much more extreme processing. Very fast hold and release times, peak analysis, and bring that threshold down. You'll see what I'm doing is I'm actually just limiting the level to almost whatever this threshold happens to be. And as I push it down, it means the signal level can never ever go above that point. These more extreme ratios push it into a thing called limiting, which I mentioned before, which really does exactly what it says. It limits the level. It stops the level getting above that. Now you might think that, you know, why on earth would you want to uh, add this limiting to, um, to the sound? What it allows you to do is it does allow you to make, or appear to make the loudness get much greater by squeezing the peaks and then using the makeup gain to bring the output level, the peak level back to where it was before. So you can see they're about the same. If I turn that on and off and on, it makes everything more present. In fact, what it's doing, because it's squashing the levels of the peaks down, and at the same time, I'm using the, it's bringing up this makeup gain for some of the, the elements that aren't compressed, the lower level elements, it's squeezing the balance between the loudest parts and the quietest parts of the signal. And that's why compression is used as a creative effect. And sometimes people use the attack and release times and other parameters to shape the sound. You can use it on individual elements, you can use it on drum, a drum group like this, where you're processing lots of sounds at the same time. So compression can be used in more extreme settings to uh, when it becomes limiting to enhance loudness of a channel or a whole mix. It can also be used for shaping sounds, shaping the characteristics of them, making them more punchy. It can also be used for something like vocals where you're trying to match up some of the quieter elements with some of the louder elements without using automation and making the whole take, the whole vocal seem much more authoritative and actually work better with the rest of the elements in the track. So there's lots of different things you can do with compression and lots of ways in which you can process the signal to actually um, and use compression to really help your, your overall mix. And in fact, there are very few mixes you actually hear which don't involve some element of compression. Perhaps if you're working in something that's much more acoustic in nature, or maybe orchestral, then certainly you might find there might be less compression going on. But certainly with electronic genres and uh, genres which are much more punchy in nature and appear much louder, you will be doing a lot of dynamic processing. So it's worth exploring this within Cubase. It should also be said that there is a channel strip compressor as well. So if I turn this off and go into the channel strip, which can be accessed from the mixer like this, I can see I can set a, a, I can set I can choose between different types of compression: standard compressor, tube compressor, vintage compressor, and you can see there's a similar set of controls, albeit stripped down. Equally, I can actually go in and actually bring up the channel settings window and access the compressor from here as well, and actually see it in this window. So you do have a compressor, a dynamic processor built into every single channel in Cubase, but you might find that actually setting up as a as a plugin, allows you to do interesting things where you can set up the compression, you have access to perhaps more parameters, and you can change the order of the processing when it comes to thinking about compression, EQ, and other processors. 
So you can see in Cubase that compression is very, very, a very, very powerful technique. It can also be somewhat confusing when you start get stuck into it and seeing actually what it's doing. The best way is to play around and actually listen to what the audio is doing rather than thinking that there are certain standard settings that will work for every single sound. And that way you'll be tying the parameters and actually, actually the threshold control, the ratio and others to actually what you're hearing. And that's the most important thing here. Using your ears, listen to what compression does and seeing whether you need it and how much of it you need to apply.